Welcome back to the All Things Everything podcast presented by Gulf Coast Smoke. My name is Alonzo. And I'm Sabrina. And today is episode 17, finally. We have a very exciting episode today. We have an in-house guest, somebody that'll be joining us on the podcast. They're actually going to be sitting right where you're sitting right now. And that is coming up very shortly. So we wanted to just really kind of recap our last week, which was a lot of us hanging out, enjoying time with family, and enjoying the new year. So if any of you guys have any uh, upcoming goals that you have for 2024, drop them in the comments down below. Let us know. Um, Ours are, I don't know, have a good day every single day. Yeah. And that's really it. Just continue to try and grow this brand, and that's really the new year, same same us, same mentality. Mm -hmm. Uh, We don't really have any New Year's resolutions. I think we have uh, company resolutions. I don't know. But anyway, besides that, we hope everybody had a very fun and safe holiday. Back to work. Boo. Boo. <laughs> but my five weeks of vacation reset. So I got five weeks to plan and I'm going to start planning very soon <laughs> just because it'll give me something to look forward to. And we just dropped the GCS Invitational video which is out on our channel right now. So if you guys go back to our most recent video, that is the video that's there. Uh, A great video. It gives a great insight of these cooks and what they had to go through cooking at our competition. Of course, there's some winners. There's some losers. All that good stuff. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So go ahead and take a look. Let us know what you think in the comments on that video. And then, of course, subscribe for any videos that are going to be coming out here this year yeah it's a long one but i think it's a it's a fun video you see you know there's eight teams you're trying to see you know everything that they're doing throughout a full day of four categories so um it's it's a good video even though it's a long one it's a good video so make sure to check that out yeah there's a lot of content that goes into it so it just is what it is uh we don't have videos that are that long ever that's our longest video ever but it was necessary for the video that we were putting out. And, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Like I said, let us know what you guys want to see us cooking in the upcoming year. I think that we really want to focus on some cool backyard recipes. Not necessarily that we can reinvent the wheel or anything like that, but I actually have an idea in my head that I really wanted to try that I'll share with you later. And we'll see what you think because a lot of the times you don't think that my ideas are the 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 best. Not that they're not the best, but I'm like sometimes you think my ideas are kind of a little like okay, bro, chill no, out. Not, nine times out of ten, what happens is you have the idea and you think you told me and you didn't. No, I always tell you my ideas, <laughs> but I am always thinking about this. So yeah, it makes sense. And well, before we move on to our guests, we really wanted to sit down and take a little bit of time, just a little bit, to talk about our Gulf Coast Smoke Invitational. The one that we just told you about, the one that is posted on YouTube, and kind of our take on it, what went good, what went bad, if anything, and what we hope to change and make better moving forward. So overall, you did film the whole thing. Uh, I filmed the smallest amount, and (laughs) it is definitely a very rewarding day at the end of the day. So we put a small snippet in the video, and I'm going to talk about the fact that We made every single person competing in the event bring $50 of unwrapped toys, and a couple of our other friends just came and brought and donated toys too, so really appreciate you for that. We were able to donate a lot of toys to the Gregory Police Department, and that's going to go to kids in the local community, which is just absolutely amazing. We kind of thought of that last minute, I would say, But we figured if we're going to do an event, let's try and get something good out of it besides just YouTube content. That's not why we made the video or anything, but we figured let's just try and do something good. So I love that we were able to do that. But I do want to hear from you. How did the event go from your eyes? I mean, again, you were filming the whole thing. You were watching everything very closely unfold. Yeah, so one thing I noticed specifically about this event was – it was very consistent. So, um, I mean, everybody's chicken looked amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, that's, and I didn't taste, the only thing I tasted throughout the day was Caesar's beans, uh, which I've had before, and Kevin's beans, which were pretty good. Yeah. 
And so I didn't really taste anything else because, you know, I'm running around. But looks wise, chick, everybody's chicken looked great. Everybody's ribs looked great, which I know everybody was a little bit um, unprepared when for, it baby for baby backs, right? Not used to cooking them. But everybody's ribs looked really, really good. Mm-hmm. Color was really, really good on everybody's stuff. So one thing specifically that I thought was really, really cool, um, you know, because I'm filming and I'm picking up on all these little things, right? But Joe with 10 forward, he's out there with his boys, which mm. I absolutely love. I thought that was great. Um, and his son, you know, they're they're prepping their ribs and his son's telling him, hey, you got to do this and, you know, it'll make a better presentation. And he's like, well, where'd you learn that from? It's from watching our videos, mm-hmm. right? So one thing I absolutely love is that Joe's out there and his boys are helping, right? And they're like, learning. Right. There's And, you know... Obviously, this competition is mainly for fun, mm-hmm. but there's still money up for grabs. There's prizes up for grabs. So you take it seriously, right? Yeah. But, I, you know, I thought it was really great that, you know, he's letting his kids help season. He's letting them learn. He's letting them try. And for a lot of us competition people, we have a hard time of, like, letting go of a, you know, a little bit of control, right? Like, yeah. I can't imagine, you know, if Penny was like, hey, can I season the ribs? I would, just, be, I would just be like, like no. Nah, <laughs> no thanks. Yeah, you know, I would just, which I, I mean, would literally his, just her, no. his boys are older, right? Um, but I just loved seeing that. I loved that there's, you know, he's raising a new generation of competition cookers. Mm-hmm. And he's passionate not only about barbecue, but about his kids. So I thought that was really, really cool to see. Yeah. No, shout out to Joe for sure. Just an amazing dude. Um, you know, Everybody that showed up was great. And... I don't mean to take anything away from them, but Joe for sure just seems to have such a great heart and he really loves to cook. And I absolutely love that passion. It is addicting. And, you know, I've had people tell me that our passion is addicting and stuff. So it's really cool when I feel that from somebody else. He makes me want to continue to try and be a role model for not only kids, but for people, anybody that's looking to cook. You know, I've talked about this fo- before, but I always wanted to be a golf coach. I love golf. Like people, I don't think people realize how much I love to golf. I just don't do it anymore because we're busy with this. I always wanted to be a golf coach, and in a sense, I am able to be a coach with this. Not necessarily 100%, but it gives me an opportunity to teach what I know, what I've learned through other people or just trial and error and pass that on which is something that's really, really amazing. And it makes me want to continue doing it, especially when you see things like that. Like, so what Sabrina's talking about specifically is on baby back ribs, if you actually push in between the bones, there's like blood that will pop out from the end of the actual rib itself. And it makes for a better presentation because instead of the blood going upward, like through the meat, you're pushing it out. And that's what his son was talking about. And I was talking about that in the video. And that video was a long time ago, too. So his son has been watching our channel a little bit, which is just really, really cool to see. And that's also why, you know, a lot of the times I get asked on, like, our videos why we're maybe not a little bit more, like, adultish, I guess, where I'll curse a little bit more or act a little bit stupid. And that's that's why right there. Uh, if you know me, you know me. And you know that I am a fool. And I love to play mm-hmm. around. And I love to joke around. But... Man, I just always have felt in life, you turn it off and you turn it on whenever you need to. And we truly feel like this is a turn it off moment. You know, we just go out there. We try and put out good content that anybody can watch. Our goal is that you can put us up on your TV and you can watch it and not be afraid. Oh, Alonzo is going to be cussing a storm up or throwing stuff or doing whatever. I'm a human being, man. I do all that stuff. But, you know, when it comes to our content, We just want it to be good for everybody to watch. And we still want to be who we are at the end of the day. I mean, this is, this is who we are. We're not, we're not faking it. Like, um, you know, we were talking to Zach and he was just like, man, it's just, you know, the way y'all are now is just, it's natural. The only difference is you kind of pep up your voice a little bit. So that's all we're trying to do. Be a little bit entertaining, but we're so grateful that people like that give us, You know, sometimes you guys don't understand it, but, or you guys don't realize it, not understand. Sometimes you guys don't realize that, you know, Sabrina and I struggle too. 
right? It's not easy for us to continuously just put out content all the time. Um, we want to grow at a faster rate than we are. I think that's human nature. But when we hear stuff like that, it just like reinvigorates everything. So you guys sometimes don't understand how much and how impactful those words can be for Sabrina and I, because again, we're human beings too. We go through ups and downs and you know, like the other day I made that Facebook post about how great our year was competition wise. I didn't put any of the bad in there, but don't get it twisted. There was a lot of bad. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I'm being honest. Yeah. We've struggled a lot. I mean, there's been a, there's been major struggles that you and I have gone through decisions we've had to make that we don't want to make. Um, trying to figure out how we're going to get stuff done. It's just, it's very hard. I don't want a pity party. Every single person that's listening right now has stuff going on too, but that's just a fact of the matter. I mean, it is what it is. So shout out to Joe, shout out to everybody that came out. I agree with you. It was a very consistent cook. Everybody there had an amazing cook. All the food that I tasted was absolutely wonderful. And just thank you to those guys for taking time out of your day to be there for us. You know, Caesar drove from the Valley Kevin drove from the San Antonio area, and it's just Brandon drove from the Houston area. It's just, it's it's an amazing feeling that people would come and support us like that. So we're really, really grateful. And did you have anything that you wanted to kind of make better or do different for the next one? No, I mean, as always, I try to... Uh you know, just make sure I'm in my head. I'm like, okay, well, I'm only going to get these two people, you know, they're boxing for this one and they're boxing for this one. Yeah. And then, and you then start it gets running started everywhere. and I'm like, nah, I'm going to get everybody if I yeah. can. Like I see somebody doing something, I'm going to try and get that. So, uh, so you have options though. I mean, it's a good thing. Yeah. I, I mean, I try, especially with any competition, everybody wants to see the boxing, right? They want to see the final product. So I try to make sure I, you know, make my way around and get everybody as best as I can. But I think it was really cool seeing a lot of these people in a different environment because like Kevin, Caesar, um, we see them all the time competing. Uh, We've only competed like maybe like one time with, uh, against Mario in a, where was that? uh, Where's that place at? Where we stayed in the thing up top. Can't think of where. where oh, the place is. Uh, El Campo. El Campo. I know we. Uh, he competed over there, but we have seen him uh, frequently because he's a head judge, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you'll smoke your eye out. I mean, it's it's funny because they've been to a lot of local competitions that we've been to, uh, so it was pretty cool to be able to actually meet them. I I couldn't get over there. You'll smoke your eye out. Yeah. Every, every little every thing. Time. Every time you'll smoke your eye out. Yeah. So, such a versatile phrase. Yeah, it, it is. It was uh, pretty entertaining. But, yeah. yeah, it's really cool, I think, for me, uh, especially because when we go compete, you know, I'm not out there, like, talking to anybody. I'm just there helping you, you know. So this time around, I'm really there, you know, up in everybody's business. Yeah. You know, so it's really cool to kind of meet these guys in a different environment. Sure. And, uh, shoot, they were getting crafty. Kevin had a little, like, cute and you can see it in one of the shots of the uh, video but you know the wind was getting to his little like butane yeah, burner he built, like a little wind uh wind blocker yeah yeah but, he was getting everyone was getting crafty like that caesar had that that wind block that he actually has built probably yeah, for cool. probably for when he used to cook beans on the elements like this right right so yeah shout out to everybody that came out and that was prepared and was ready and, man, it was just such a great event. Shout out to Chance and Travis who helped us with the event. Shout out to everybody that came out and judged and helped us out with the event. I mean, so many sponsors, so many people to thank. We thank them all in the video. And, yeah, we are hoping that the next one is better. We're hoping to get a new venue because we want to allow for people to come out and just hang out and see what's going on. We are not going to up the amount of teams. Um, unless we maybe go to 10, that's going to be our max. Yeah. Unless we get to the point where we could like have other people filming, Yeah, you know, we would have to have multiple people shoot <laughs> or maybe one day we could, uh, give everybody their own little, well, we don't like to use GoPro, but the DJI, you know, yeah. have little, um, cameras there at each station would be cool, but we're not, yeah, we're D- not big like that. Yeah. If DJI ever listens to this. We do not like GoPro. We prefer your products. Yeah. So hit us up. <laughs> Shameless plug. But no, uh, 
you know, there's really not much else to say from my end. I thought it was a great event. Do I think it could be better? Yes. Do I think that I could have done better on the interviews and stuff like that? Yes. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to get better. Believe it or not, even though it's a YouTube video, that's a different type of video for me. So it, I am a little bit out of my element because I'm sitting there interviewing somebody one-on-one. -on -one. I don't want to have papers in my hand where I'm reading a script and, and asking them questions. I'm trying to think of stuff on the fly, and it is not easy. Yeah, it can be hard to also remember like, oh, I'm supposed to talk about this or oh, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, overall, like I said, I, I had a great time. I am extremely proud of what we did. And I think that, you know, it's just going to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So, again, if you guys want to go watch that video right now, uh, shout out Sabrina. She did a great job editing, put a lot of work into this. So show some love to her in the comments. Did you have anything else you wanted to talk about when it comes to the competition? No, I'm just I'm already brainstorming, uh, you know, what our categories are going to be for this next one. There's always going to be something different. Yeah. And that's never going to change. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. The baby back ribs, I think we threw them for a loop. But man, I think we do something like, I want to do like beef ribs. Yes. I want to do like beef back ribs because you can cook those in, you know, four hours. Right. You know, four or five hours. You can cook a nice rack of beef back ribs. And man, we just got to continue to find ways to be different with this competition. Yeah. And we like to go along with the seasons too. Like yeah. our next one will be in the summer. S yeah, summer so vibes. Hot. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to competing in the summer like us competing in the summer because, man, I get major heat rash, dude. Ugh, I'm not looking forward to it. But, you know, again, is what it is. We're not there yet. Let's focus on today. And if you don't have anything else to talk about when it comes to the competition, no, let's move on to our grand champion of the 2023 Winter Gulf Coast Smoke Invitational. And finally, our first in-person guest ever, we have a very special guest, the three-time back-to-back-to-back Gulf Coast Smoke Invitational Champion. Man, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm uh, Zach Smith, Meat Locker Misfits, uh, born and raised here in Portland, Texas. There you and, go. Uh, currently live in Ingleside, just uh, jump skipping away. So Yes, sir. Yeah, you're pretty close. That was exactly why we were able to get you in today, so... The first guest that we've had inside the podcast room, it feels really exciting for me. Sabrina is here today. She's just on the other side of the camera. Say I'm hello. Here. Hello, hello. Yeah, she's here. So don't think that she's not. Um, we're excited for this one. Number one, because this, is a whole, this has been a long time coming. And number two, because again, you're in here with us today. So we brought you in here today for a very, very, very specific reason. We've been throwing... Gulf Coast Smoke Invitational competitions for just over a year now. And you've been invited to every single one of them. And there's a reason why you keep getting invited back. Man, this is your competition. This is your competition so far undefeated, undisputed. And we keep on bringing in harder and harder talent. And you still keep winning. I mean, straight up, what makes this event for you something that you can just keep dominating over and over? Well, I don't really know, to be honest. I mean, the uh, <laughs> the very first one, you know, we were pretty new at it, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't even know if we, I didn't even take a competition class before then. So we yeah. were borrowing a barbecue trailer pit from a buddy of mine. and You uh, did. We won that one. Yeah. That was shocking. So that one was, I'm, I remember, well, I remember all the competitions like there yesterday because they're so much fun. There's so much to take away from every single one of them. That competition, you're right. You did borrow your friend's pit. You had to move it around consistently because the wind was insane. Yes. And it was actually insane this last one as well. Yes. Now you got a new pit, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But, man, it was crazy because watching you have to adjust every single time was really wild because it's like, man, this this guy's – you're struggling, yeah. right? Yeah, it was your, your pit – that pit was – although it was a nice pit, it's nothing like what you've got now. Sure. Nothing. So it was really interesting. We had four teams at that time. That's really all that we felt we could handle. Right. And, uh, you know, we did chicken, we did ribs, and we did chef's choice. And I remember exactly what you cooked, and I remember you just 
kind of took it away with the ribs, man. The ribs have been hitting every single time you cook out there. I mean, I know you say that you don't really know what helps you keep winning or what makes you keep winning. Does comfortability have anything to do with it? I mean, not saying that I help it, but I mean, we're good friends. I'm there with you. I'm kind of chit-chatting with you. It probably feels like uh, an environment you're really used to by now, maybe. Yeah, I would say that's that's true. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of the uh, hometown kid type deal. Yeah, you know, for sure. We kind of know everyone that's there. All fairy tale. All buddies I've known through you know high school also. Yeah. So it's it's uh, definitely a comfortable feeling. Yeah, I mean, so we have Chance. We have Travis out there. You know both of them. We have a lot of people that are coming from our high school. So we grew up in the same exact town. We went to the same exact high school. So a lot of the stuff that we're doing here, it's it's actually really cool to see it unfold because we're two, we're two young guys in the same town trying to do the same exact thing out there in the barbecue world, which is really, really fun to see unfold. People don't understand that when you have somebody around you that really likes the same things as you, man, it makes it that much easier when we're at competitions together. We park right next to each other. We obviously, we want to win ourselves, but if it's not us, hey, man, I'd, I'd love it if you did or not. For sure, but, for sure. man, uh, it's been it's been great to see the competitions unfold, and it's been great to see you win every single one of them. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not sure if you're ever going to lose this thing. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> this year was a... Uh... This year was definitely the easiest, I felt like. You think so? Yeah, it was just also just really laid back. Like, yeah, the first one, I was real nervous. That was the first, yeah. you know, barbecue competition we had done before. Yeah. And then the second. Was that your first comp? Oh, well, I you had say, done you had done Ingleside, but that was really Ingleside. it. Yeah. yeah, that was our first one, was, I guess, was Ingleside, CBA sanctioned, and then we did yours in yeah. December. And, uh, yeah, I was nervous. So yeah. We were really nervous going yeah. to the CBA, did yours. And then the second one, I felt like I had, like, the pressure. Like the you know the GC pressure that you get yeah and this one it was just like you know whatever I'm I'm getting to a point where whatever happens happens yeah no I think that's a great way to look at it because I think when you get it in your own head like I have to win this and you start overthinking things yes. so not to make it about us but man when we won two in a row in that third one we overthought it majorly and then shot ourselves in the foot and did horrible yeah. so it's that's really really awesome that you were able to keep a strong mentality because whether you want to believe it or not. This last one had a lot going on for it, right? So there was there was a lot of money. There was yes. a lot of great prizes, which we'll get to in a little bit. But again, uh, absolutely impressed that you've been able to do it back to back to back. What were your thoughts going into the third one? Because you'd already GC'd the first two, right? And so people might think the odds were just against you, statistically speaking, or because of the caliber of teams. But when you look back on this past year, kind of like with us, after that first competition, you started heavily competing, you know, so although it seems like, okay, these are high caliber teams and the statistics might be against you, you've been competing a lot. Mm -hmm. And which sanctioning body have you been competing in? Yeah, so we primarily uh, cook in IBCA. Mm -hmm. So we cook the CBA one that's in Ingleside because it's two blocks from my house. Yeah. It's for a good cause. Yeah. Know, kids with cancer. Um, so... But yeah, primarily we're in the IBCA. Right. And so you've been getting a lot of competition experience in this past year. So, I mean, I think you're up there with the high caliber teams at the competition. I hang out with um, some high caliber people, just like Alonzo does. You know, yeah. Just different sanctioning bodies. Yeah. Um, you just start to get comfortable. I yeah. Mean, just with your, more with your cook, the more you do it, the more comfortable you get to cook, the more people you hang out with. You know, these real high caliber people that are very intimidating yeah. when you're first getting into it. You know, they got, you know, 35, 40 foot trailers showing up. You know, they don't have to unload anything. Randy Kendrick. Anything. Right. Yeah, yeah, Randall and Jamie, you know, they just fold out their Batman flaps on their trailer and they're ready to roll. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, it was definitely intimidating at first. And I think now it's not as intimidating. And, yeah, it's just I'm, I'm slowly getting into the mindset of, you know, you can't, you can only control your cook. And yeah. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. No, I mean, for Sabrina and I, especially now, I think the biggest thing for us is um, more, more so just trying to enjoy what we're doing rather than, oh, we have to win. Or uh, if we don't do good, it's not, it doesn't look good for our brand or whatever. Man, everybody has good days. Everybody has bad days. I've been at competitions where top cooks in Texas don't get any calls. You know, I've been in competitions where we don't get any calls. It's just, it is what it is. It's it's anyone's given day out there. 
There's a lot of great cooks out there. And I think when you get out of your own head, that's when you actually start to cook better. Like this last competition, we went out there to Angleton. Man, I can honestly say, like you can ask her, we're just hanging out, enjoying time, messing around with the kids. The kids were playing around with my dad. We're just cooking what I felt like was good barbecue. Ended up doing okay. Yep. Uh, when you stop, I mean, sometimes I feel like we try to get way too analytical. Right. And it's like, man, we are just burning meat. Right. right. So at the end of the day, it's not the hugest deal. But um, yeah, over time, I mean, you've competed plenty. Yeah. So you have experience coming into the third one, even though it is a dip- different atmosphere. Like we filmed the whole thing. We're interviewing people. I mean, even at that. So a lot of these good cooks that came in, they're not used to that. So I'm not saying that that makes them nervous, but maybe it's a little bit different. Yeah. It's right. Different. Like, oh, someone's in my face with a camera now right. and a mic right. and they're watching me cook. And I can't mess up. Whereas you, you're like, nah, this is nothing to me anymore, right? I mean, you I could Sabrina, go- every time she came over, every time she came over to <laughs> yeah. film me, I was having issues. Yeah. Yep. Like, hey, just go away for a second. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but you're I used- I had that to- effect on people, yes. But you're used to it now, right? That's right. the biggest thing is right. like, we could do it again. And you have that much more experience in this type of competition than anyone else. Yep. So it is an advantage because you keep winning that you keep coming and you're- just ahead of the game in that yeah so going into the third one did you feel any different like i know you said on the second one the nerves are kind of there because it's like well i've already gc'd once you know i i I gotta retain my title right Right. but the third time around did you were you feeling confident because of all the experience you have competing this past year or were you thinking man i mean what are the odds i'm gonna do it a third time yeah, I don't know if I was feeling confident. I was just feeling comfortable. Right. You know, I was just comfortable with my cooks. There was only one thing, which I know we'll talk about here in a second, that I was slightly nervous about the timeline. It was really going to be a crunch for me to get it done. Um, but I've been trying to slowly rele- release some things and let Bree, my, that's my wife, try to handle some of the things. I'm a control freak. Mm-hmm. And, right. I, <laughs> yeah. and if I mess up, I know it's my mess up. You know, yeah. I, I don't want to... I don't want her to mess up and then... You don't want your wife to drop the chicken. Right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's true. I always carry the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> but like just, just little things, you know, making the sauces, prepping the brines, you know, yeah. um, the injections. It's time consuming for one person to do. Mm-hmm. I've relinquished all of that to Sabrina. Yes. She does it all now. It's yeah. um, I'm getting there now. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I think I think having having that support system, it really does change a lot for you for sure. Yeah. And I think that helped with being more comfortable. Because I didn't have to think so much about everything. You know, right. I kind of just said, hey, you're, you're going to handle this cook. And yeah. I'll, I'll handle cook it, cooking the meat, but you handle the, the plating and all that. And that was nice. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So I, I did want to ask, just for anybody that's out there that's listening, that's interested in trying to compete in one of our competitions moving forward, you compete in sanctioning events. In sanctioned events. Sorry. You compete in sanctioned events. Sometimes... 100, 150 teams. Now, this is eight teams. It's a very controlled environment. Do you think it's harder? Do you think it's easier? If someone was to come, what do you think that they should expect from it? I think this one was probably harder because of the caliber of teams that were there. There There's probably a lot of items besides the chef choice, Mm -hmm. right, that were really close in similarity. Yeah. Um, We got to try a few things that were laid off on the tables afterwards. Um. So I feel like it probably was tighter, you know, and afterward y'all had mentioned the scoring was really tight. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's, everyone's getting judged by the same six judges, right? Six, six judges were there. Mm -hmm. Um, So when you start going to the bigger comps, you know, you hear about these death tables and tables where your box might end up in maybe everyone there hates a really moist chicken, you know? Yeah. And so you might get scored low. Sure. <laughs> so yeah, it's nice. Some of the smaller ones are kind of nice, um, just because you know you're getting judged by the same six people. Yeah, it's it's pretty. I mean, it's pretty even. Right. Uh, it's pretty fair. Whatever they like, they like. Right. I mean, you can't really argue against it, right? You got the same exact people that are judging over and over and over all day. The only thing about that is you worry about judges' fatigue, I guess, a little bit. But again. They're all they're all judging the same exact thing. Yep. So what they think is the best, that's what wins at the end of the day. Yep. So speaking of the competition, your overall placings out of eight teams on your beans, you ended up sixth place. Your chef's choice, you ended up second. 
your chicken was first place and your ribs was second place. So beans was a jackpot. So it had nothing to do with the overall score. The kicker there was the winner of the beans got a free 28-inch Weber griddle, which I'm sure you would have wanted. But the other three, that's part of the three core categories. That's what counted towards your overall. So you absolutely, you almost swept it. Second, first, second. I wanted to ask you, how did each of your turn-ins go? Let's start with Chef's Choice. So Chef's Choice, we did, uh, we just call them pork belly Mm -hmm. burn-ins. Yeah, but they're not just pork belly burn-ins. They are not. They're a little different. like a deconstructed uh, jalapeno you know, stuffed jalapeno. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause jalapeno it had popper? the jalapeno popper. Yeah. 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 It's kind of like a deconstructed jalapeno popper. You yeah. Know, jalapeno popper is a jalapeno cream cheese and a piece of bacon wrapped around it. But instead of the jalapeno being, you know, the key item in ours, it's a, uh, a pork belly bite, mm-hmm. you know, a chunk of pork belly, probably one inch by one inch with a piece of cream cheese on top, and then a candied jalapeno on top. That's what I was going to say. Make sure to mention candied jalapeno, which I think that that really adds for a great contrast of flavor because you still do get a little bit of the kick yep. from the jalapeno because the seeds and everything is still in there, but it really works well with that cream cheese. And then, of course, it's candied, so it is a little bit sweet on the back end. Overall, it was a really, really good bite. So the cool thing about being one of the guys that's not competing and not judging is everybody, after the turn-ins, everyone comes and tells me everything. Oh, this was great. That was great. This was great. That was great. And the cool thing about it is none of the judges complained about any food all day. I think they really enjoyed everything from what we could tell. Mm-hmm. There was multiple people that came and told me, dude, those right there were fire. <laughs> and it was your it was your, uh, it was was your your turn-in. So, I mean, obviously you did end up getting second place, but made for a really, really great, and it kept you in the game, yep. right? So second yep. place doesn't hurt you at all. It actually ended up helping you. But that was a great turn in and very creative, in my opinion. Um, yeah, we love seeing... Cre- so the history of our competitions, it seems to be a popper, so something bacon-wrapped, mm-hmm. and then steak or surf and turf. Like that's. Uh, so I really like to see these different unique dishes. So... That was one thing I thought that was really unique this time around. Something different than the, the which, I mean, the bacon wrap poppers, those are always good. Right. Yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. The steak is always good. But um, on my end, when I'm walking around and I'm filming everybody, I like to see these unique, different things. So I thought that was very interesting. Was this something you guys practiced or you made before or you just kind of had an idea like, hey, this sounds like it'd be pretty cool. Let's try it. Yeah, we've made them before. You know, we've taken them to a few house parties that we were invited to, and everyone demolishes them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're gone in no time. And yeah. so, I mean, we knew they were good. That was um, that was the cook that I was worried about, the time crunch. It was four hours, you know, yeah. uh, we could show up at seven, yeah. you know, and it was, I think turn-in was at 11. Uh, uh, turn-in for 12, Chef's uh, Choice yeah, was 12. 12, so it, it takes me four hours from the time that I'm, Putting it on the pit. You still got to start your pit. And yeah. I still had to start the pit. My pit takes, you know, yep. 40, 45 minutes to an hour to get hot. Yeah. You know, so it was it was going to be cutting it close. We did do a practice cook on them Friday just to make sure I could get them done in the, in yeah. the timeline. But, yeah. yeah, we knew that the short timeline was going to push cooks to do, you know, the surf and turf and, you know, or just a shrimp plate or just something that was really quick, which I get. But, yeah, yeah. We, were, we were trying to be different with it. Yeah, I mean, it, it obviously worked out. Yeah. So – the first place for Chef's Choice did cook a surf and turf. Yep. And and the thing with that is uh, I had a piece of Caesar steak. It, he nailed the steak. It's so hard to beat a steak when it's a perfectly cooked steak. And that's just the truth. Um, I, I do agree it's not necessarily as uh, flamboyant as something that you would do or that you did. But, man, at the end of the day, it's just so hard to, to beat a right. perfectly cooked steak. So, I understand why he was able to take that one. I mean, but still, uh, props to you for doing something different. The pork belly bites were incredible. Yeah, and when you look back on the scores, I mean, Caesar, he had a 233, and you had a 224. And then the rest of the scores for Chef's Choice were very close together. I mean, in the teens, like 216, 215. But y'all's were... Above everybody above, else's. By, much above everybody else's. Yeah. yeah so. and, and, and again, that's where... 
if you would have been in that 215, 16 range, you wouldn't have won the contest. Right. So where you did something different, it elevated you. So a lot of people blow off Chef's Choice. Not not necessarily at the competition here that we did, but I feel like a lot of people will blow off Chef's Choice. But the way that we make it is it counts. Right. So you cannot blow it off. I mean, if you want to just, eh, Chef's Choice don't matter, it's going to hurt you. Yeah. And you're not going to win. Yep. And I think that that's the coolest thing about our contests is that it really does push you to do something different. So like last contest, we had you cook chicken wings rather than just a flat out chicken. Yep. So we had chicken wings, we had ribs, and we had Chef's Choice there. So you had a great Chef's Choice on that one as well. It didn't hurt you. You know, you didn't win Chef's Choice, but it again, it didn't hurt you. It's not hurting you. And that's the thing, man, uh, uh, I feel like you you either have to go tried and true or something, I don't want to say outrageous, but something different, something that's really going to catch the judge's attention. The people that are judging our contests are literally people that just grew up in our town. Right. Just, they, I don't even know how much they love barbecue, right? They, right. I don't think they eat it nearly as much as even the people that go and judge like an IBCA. So you're really cooking for that backyard person that just maybe has it once a month, once every two months. So you really, you hit you hit it right on the head there, and I think that you had a great dish on Chef's Choice. But moving on to chicken, you've mentioned before that chicken can be your nemesis, and it was a half chicken. Well, technically the way I did it was I gave everybody two whole chickens. Yep. And I said the only thing you can't do is you can't pull it, you can't shred it. So if you wanted to, you could have deconstructed that chicken. You could have done legs, thighs, leg quarters, whatever you wanted to do. You decided to go with halves. And how did chicken end up for you? So it is something that you guys are cooking on a regular basis. So I do feel like it was a very even playing field. The most even that we had in the whole competition, you did end up getting a first place chicken there too. Yeah, so our half chicken is a... Definitely our nemesis. IBCA, we have to cook a half chicken. That's what the turn-in is. We uh, struggle with it. Bad. Yeah. And, uh, As do we. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely <laughs> what's holding us back. Um, you know, you start getting the spreadsheets going and seeing what's hitting, when it's hitting, when it's not hitting. Mm-hmm. And it's always a chicken that's really hurting us. You know, we've yeah. gone, you know, maybe like a eighth place overall with almost a dead to last chicken. Yeah. So it's like if we would have... Could have pulled the chicken in. Yeah. You'd have been there. We would have had a chance, right? Yeah. And so we got a new Weber Mm -hmm. kettle. It's the first time I've owned one. Yeah. We love it. We cook on it uh, pretty often. Our half chicken, we switched to cooking it on the Weber. Mm -hmm. And my first time cooking a half chicken on the Weber was Friday night. Yeah. Before the comp. Mm -hmm. So... Shout out to Jamie Roby. Yeah. He got me a pretty close timeline on cooking a half chicken on a Weber. And uh, I think the birds were a little smaller. Yeah, than they were small. What I practiced with. And so the timeline, I was afraid to push it mm-hmm. too much further because I didn't want it to not be done. Sure. Um, So it got done a little early and I think it kind of dried out a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, you tasted it. You agreed it was a little dry. But I mean, it was... Moist. It was just more done than most competition chickens. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I mean, a lot of those judges out there, I'm not saying specifically the ones who judge, but most judges, when it comes to chicken, they prefer on the drier side because they're not used to people cooking it to the, you know, one, the breast to the 165 range. So a lot of them, when you give them something like that and it's very moist and juicy, they feel like it's almost underdone. Right. So I feel like even if it is a tad bit on the, drier side that won't necessarily hurt you in a competition yeah i would say the the comps that we've done decent with chicken in it's always overcooked yeah yeah and anytime we undercook it um, we strike out yeah well i mean that's something to be said something for anybody that's listening out there to think about if your chicken's not hitting maybe push it a little bit further i'm not saying push it 30 degrees more but maybe 10 degrees more five degrees more and just kind of see how it hits compared to what you're typically doing and If you think about it like this, a lot of the times we are pumping those chickens full of brine and injection or injection or just brine. So you can push them pretty far and they're still going to stay pretty moist. For the most part, they're still going to stay pretty moist. So like I said, anyone that's out there, think about these things. When you're hearing somebody like Zach say, hey, 
when I hit on chicken, my breast is at 175 or whatever. Man, just think about that. 165 may not be the play. But kind of back to the chicken that you cooked, when you tasted it, when you had it and you were complete with it, did you think it was a first place chicken? No, because of the moisture. Yeah. Yeah, the t- taste was really good. The taste was very good. We all liked the taste of it, um, but the moisture content... Uh, Just this was not where you wanted it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think... I didn't try anybody's chicken, but based on looks and based on the way chickens have looked previously in our competitions, these were some of the best-looking chickens that I've seen from everybody. Everybody had a very good-looking chicken. Nothing was too dark. Colors were great. Shapes were great. I mean, and you have people like Kevin, who's a very, he's number one chicken cook, right? You know, so I think based off of the way everything looked, everybody's looked really good. And you had people who were really good at chicken. I mean, I think that says something. You, even if you weren't sure about that chicken, it was probably a good chicken. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't probably, it was. Yeah. And it won. Yeah. And like I said, the, you got all the same six judges. We actually had some judges come out. Shout out Leonard. We had judges come out that compete all the time. Leonard did. Barty did. I mean, um, Danielle has tasted a million times my competition food. She knows what she's looking for, you know? So 50% of the judges really knew what they wanted. So think about it like that, right? So we did have a great mixture of judges. These are not, so I know I said earlier that these are people from our hometown. I actually kind of lied there because these are, these are people that really know what they're looking for and they compete on a normal basis. Or like I said, Danielle, she's been to so many competitions with us. She's tasted all of our food. She's given us feedback, good and bad. She knows what she wants. And then that's what you're trying to do. Feed people good food. Yep. Don't really overcomplicate it any more than that to be 100% honest. So enough about chicken. Let's move on to the one that I found most interesting of the day. And it was baby back ribs. So typically, you're used to cooking spare ribs. I prefer spare ribs 100 times over. I am never going to the store and picking baby back ribs. That's just me. I'm never doing it. Sabrina kind of likes them, I think. Yeah, I do. I don't I don't like them at all. I I, they're, they're meaty. Yeah, if I had to choose, I'm not a big rib guy, but if I had to choose, it's going St. Louis. For, for sure. sure. Yeah. 100%. So, first off, when you found out that it was going to be baby backs, how mad were you at me? And <laughs> two, how do you think that they compare to competition spare ribs? Because, again, you're still pumping them. You're injecting them. You're saucing them, all that good stuff. I mean, was there a big comparison there for you? Yeah, I was pretty mad at you. <laughs> Cause, uh, well, because you had been winning first place ribs back to back. Yeah, yeah with we've the been doing pretty good with the spare ribs. Yeah. And I was going out of town on vacation trip, and I wasn't going to have a lot of time to practice them. Yeah. So I was kind of worried about that. But we did one practice run on them. Uh, so I'm going to cut you off for a split second. For anybody out there that thinks that I give Zach advantages, Mm-mm. don't y- – so – I had a couple people call me, and they're playing with me, and they're like, oh, dude, your your boy, your boy won again. I'm like, dude, I'm not doing anything. This dude's fair and square winning. I'm like, he'll call me and ask me questions about the competition, and I'll literally tell him, sorry, man, I can't tell you. Yeah. Like, and I you, did, I did call about, I said, hey, how big the bird's going to be? And, and I was said, like, I don't know. They're still in the bag. Yep. And yeah. I said, nope, there, I ain't telling you anything. There's no I, inside intel. There's no inside intel. I never, I've never given Zach any information that helps him out with this competition. He's just fair and square winning. Anybody that wants to change that, come out to the next one and beat him. Come on. So I just wanted to throw that in there real quick. I know the people are kidding with me, but I'm sure. Some people are going to be out there going to be like, oh, my gosh, Zach won three times in a row. He's He cooks with Alonzo. He cooks on his team, all this stuff. And it's like, hey, I know how it looks, but yeah. <laughs> I am not I am not helping Zach win these things it's at all fair whatsoever. And square. It's fair and square all day, every day. So back to your ribs. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to cut you off. No, so, yeah, the Baybacks, we did one practice run on them on uh, Friday. We pretty much did a whole practice run just to get a good solid timeline. We knew the timeline was going to be a little different on them compared to the spare ribs um, or St. Louis cut. Um, I think they turned out good. The boxing was very difficult yeah. because yeah. they're not flat. And so even whenever we're saucing them, when you we 
dip in the glaze, you know, dip in the sauce. And then you put them on like a little. We put them on a little tray, mm -hmm. put them back in the pit to set the sauce, and we could not keep them standing up. They just kept yep. falling. So we ended up getting one of the sacrificial ribs and laying it on its side, you know, on each side, kind of pinning them in there to help keep them up. Yeah, that was that was the difficult part oh, for yeah. sure was the boxing. Everybody, yeah. from what I saw, except for one person, which I'll say, everybody had trouble boxing their ribs. You know, they were falling over. Yeah. Uh, you, you can't just lay them in the same way you would those spares, right? No. They're not flat, they're curved. Yep. Um, but I will say everybody's ribs looked very, very good. Much like the chicken, every color and everything was good on everybody's ribs. But I remember walking over to Carl's and man, Carl, he did a different way of boxing. He had them like in one row and then a couple on the side. But I was like, wow, those are great, Carl. But at his, I think, were like the most flat that mm. I saw out of everybody's. But yeah, everybody had the same issues. They were yeah. curved. They were not laying in that box straight. So, I mean, you either had to just cram them all in there to support each other. Right. Or, I mean, they were going to fall over regardless. Yeah, we thought about doing like a, you know, five piece off to the side and laying one on its side so you could see the mm -hmm. smoke ring. Like, we thought about that and I was like, I don't get to do CBA boxes very often. I yeah. love a 10 piece St. Louis box. Yeah. I love your box. 10 piece all day? 10 piece yeah. all day long. The only time I ever throw nine is if it won't. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just falling so off. It don't look good. Yeah. We went 10 piece. Yeah. And it looked, they were, it was they were falling over. It was full. So we shoved yeah. two more in there and got a 12 piece. Oh, nice. Yep. Nice. Yeah. There you go. Yours did look good. I think uh, maybe Kevin also. I think he, he was going for a 10 piece uh, CBA. That's yep. what we do, right? But I think he probably had like 11 or 12 in there too. Because, I mean, the smartest thing to do was just shove as many as right. you could. Yeah. So it can stay up. And right. it was a very heavy box. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, so at that point, I was actually holding on to our, uh, our Osmo Action 3 and... I was holding on to it and I was like watching people box and I was freaking out, dude, because nobody could get them to stand up. Right. And and I didn't say anything, but from my point of view, I was just like, man, this is insane. Every single one of these guys is struggling. And I think everybody knew they were going to struggle because everybody started boxing earlier than normal. Right. I So I felt like it was wild because it was windy outside. It was a little bit cool. I was like, in my head, the first thing I thought is, man, these ribs are drying out. Because I saw a lot of people, and they were struggling to get their, their ribs in their box. And they were messing with them for a good five, seven minutes. Yeah. And, man, my opinion, that you're losing moisture. You're getting that cold air is hitting them ribs, drying them out a little bit, cooling them down. And you want a hot rib. You had 12 ribs in there, which... The thing I always like to tell people when I talk to them about boxing food is the more food you put in there, the more that's actually hot inside of the box. Right. So if you put four ribs in there, only four ribs are hot. If you put 12 ribs in there, there's 12 hot ribs. It's going to keep that box hotter yep. longer. Yep. So if you're not putting as much food in there and it's cold outside and it's windy, your food's going to dry out and it's going to be cold. And no judge wants cold food. It just... You know, sometimes you can't help it, but they don't want cold food. Right. So putting 12 in there honestly probably helped you out a lot because it helped that that moisture. It helped that heat for a longer period of time over everybody else. Yeah, I would say they were very juicy also. And yeah. The so, moisture on our ribs when we were cutting them, I was like, yeah, these are, yeah, these are very moist. And you know what's crazy is I had, I think everyone's ribs maybe, I'm not lying. There was not one bad rib. Like, I was biting the ribs, and I was like, dude, this is going to be hard. Because I tasted nobody's where I was like, oh, this is just way better than everybody else's, or this is way worse than everybody else's. And like I told you earlier, people were coming up to me after every single uh, round was done judging. And after ribs, everyone was like, oh, dude, box number one was amazing. And then the next person would say, oh, box four. So everyone was saying different boxes. Yep. So there was a lot of great ribs out there, man. It did look a lot of like, like even the chicken boxes afterwards. Exactly right. the same. We we went up there and I was like, I'm going to go see how much they ate of my chicken. I couldn't even tell which chicken was mine anymore. <laughs> they look exactly yeah. the yeah, same. There, there was a bunch of them that looked a lot of like. Yeah. Sure. It, but that's when you have a lot of people that compete. Right. And they know what they're doing yep. for the most part. It's all going to look very similar, man. Sure. That's why, you know, I always try and something a little bit different that's going to make it. You know, just stand out just a little bit. Doesn't want to be crazy, but just ever so slightly. Yeah, and that's one thing I noticed um, on my end. And like I said, I didn't. The only thing I tried the whole 
day was uh, a couple things of beans. But one thing I noticed was chicken and ribs, uh, very consistent in the way that things looked uh, as opposed to, you know, our previous competitions. Everything was very consistent, and you could even tell that in the, the scoring. I mean, scores were very consistent for chicken, for ribs, um, even for Chef's Choice, which, I you know, you don't have any expectations for that because – it's anything goes, yep. right? But yeah, chicken and ribs were very, very consistent as far as the way they looked and uh, obviously the way they taste because they scored very, very well overall. So as far as right there was your three main categories, which seasoning out of the four do you feel helped you most in your success that weekend? Southern Hospitality. It's the best. It's, it's the, the goat. Best. It's the it goat. Is. It is. It's so the OG and it's the goat. Yeah. <laughs> I always tell people, I'm like, dude, everyone always asks me, what's your favorite seasoning of mine? Right? And I'm like, well, man, I mean, obviously I love all of them. I'm, but realistically, the answer is Southern Hospitality. That's what brought us into the game. And man, to me, it's still the color, the flavor, everything on it. It just always turns out so perfect. Yeah, not, so, to toot, not to toot our horn, yeah. but it just, if you want to try one of our seasonings, That'd be the one. That'd be the one. For Southern sure. hospitality, 100% all day, every day. Yeah, and I get it, like, when I'm advertising out yeah. in the streets. You know, it's a lot of people that aren't hardcore into the barbecue, they have a hard time paying the 10 11 bucks for a bottle of seasoning. Yeah. Right? So I'm like, if you're going to get one, this is the most versatile, for sure. For sure. You know, your, your wife can use it on the broccoli or the asparagus. Or, yeah. Right. You know, you can use it on pretty much anything. Oh, uh, Dude, and it's, you know, it's just got such a great flavor, man. It I does. mean, I use it on... Beef, I use it, dude. She'll put it in mashed potatoes on it, everything. Yeah, so, the, so pork, the pork belly bites is the only seasoning that was on them. Yeah, and they were amazing. Ribs, obviously, we yeah. use it for the ribs and the color. Yeah. Chicken is primarily what's used on there. Yeah, you know, so and that's another thing that I actually talked to you about personally, and it's not even on our notes for today, but I did want to bring it up because you have been cooking with our seasonings from the beginning, yes. right? So before you and I even really knew each other, you were cooking with our seasonings which thank you for that, by the way. But that's been almost three years now. Yeah. Right? So, and this is even before you were competing. You are just cooking at your backyard, at your house. And do you think that that gives you an advantage in competitions like this? Because our rule is you can only use our seasonings. We provide them, but you can only use our seasonings. And I think that if it's your first time ever using all of our seasonings together, right? you may not know how to pair them. Whereas you, you've been cooking with them for so long, you know, hey, for example, I want a light layer of bell uh, and a heavier layer of hospitality, or I want a heavy layer of base and whatever. Do you think that that helps you in these competitions? Because it's a very even playing field. It is. Yeah, I, w I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. We've been cooking with them forever. Yeah. You know, the original three were uh, all MSG free. One yeah. My little girl's allergic to MSG, so that's kind of why we jumped on the on yeah. the Gulf Coast smoke from the get-go. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, you know, we cooked in the backyard on the Traeger with them for a long time. A long time. Yeah, and know. I mean, th I know that because we've talked about it before. Yeah. And now you're competing and you haven't swapped it up. No. So it's you've been cooking and competing with our seasonings for almost a full year now. Yeah, y'all seasoning, there's uh, one other seasoning that I use. Yeah. One yeah. Seasoning, not one brand, one other seasoning that yeah. I use. I know and, what it is. We won't talk about that on the... And uh, that's it. I yeah. mean, other than that, it's it's the four. Yeah. So... I mean, very versatile, you know, but I agree with you. Southern Hospitality, that would be the one I could not go without. Right. I, I feel like I could go without... Well, no, not really, but Southern Hospitality, I could not go without. I mean, it is just... I mean, we use it heavily on our pork and our ribs... Heavily on my brisket and on our chicken. I mean, it's on everything. So, anyway. No, I just was curious about that because I wanted to know if you feel like there was one that kind of helped you out. So, I'm glad it was Southern Hospitality. Now, do you think doing a practice run made a big difference on the results of the competition for you? Yeah, the practice run for us was primarily just to get a solid timeline. Right. Um and competition timelines key everything. Yeah, you got to have it. If you don't have it, there's no way you're going to win it. So, um that was primarily what it what that was for. You know, we had never really cooked um a 
competition bean before. I'm still not really sure what that is, but yeah, <laughs> um, I don't think that it's necessarily anything rather than just a really good bean. Yeah, honestly, with a lot of you know big punch to the mouth with the flavor. Yeah, um, did you try Mario and Caesar's beans? Yes, they were good. Yeah, I thought Mario's were incredible. I Way thought Caesar's mine. I thought Caesar's were incredible. <laughs> See, so Caesar he cooks beans like yeah. Every time there's a bean competition, he'll cook it. Yeah, because he, I mean, he's one smoking on the Rio. With beans, and that's like a major, big time bean yeah, competition. They were really good. Yeah, his his are great, and Mario's. I mean, Mario ended up winning it. His were great too. I'm not gonna lie. When I first was tasting everybody's, <clears throat> I had a lot of really good beans, and then you know you like taste Mario's, and you're like, I'm not gonna lie to you. They were definitely elevated. Right. It's like, oh, all right. I'm not too sure if these other guys have a chance, but everybody's was great. Nobody had anything bad. It's just, I think they understand what it takes to have that competition being, or, or at least that's what it seems because I think they packed, like you said, a lot of flavor into so one much bite. Flavor. It was so much flavor, but at the same time, I felt like it was something I could keep eating me yeah. personally. Yeah, for sure. It wasn't like, Oh, like, okay. W- competition brisket, right? Dude, I can't, I cannot eat too much of it. Mm-hmm. Even Sabrina and I were like, dude, I'm over this. Like, get this brisket away from me, you know? Well, that's like uh, even because at the end of the day when we compete, we've only had bites of things throughout the day, but, like, we're stuffed. So yeah. Like, we, we yeah, just so want to drink tired water. Tired of eating smoke. Tired of yeah. eating, yeah. Tired and of eating you got, meat. You got the meat, and anyone who comes out and hangs out with you that isn't around the competition world, <laughs> yeah. they're take like, it. oh, I'll take it. I'm like, please. Please, yeah. Please, please, going in the trash can, please take so. it away, yeah. And it stinks because you don't want to throw it in the trash can. You spend a lot of money on all of our right. meats, but... Man, it, sometimes it is just unfortunately way too much. Yep. So we wanted to talk about our competition in the sense that you can't bring trailers. So most teams that are there, that were there, they're used to cooking out of a trailer. Now you, you're still cooking with a pop-up tent with your outlaw, and you're out in the elements. So was the wind this event a big issue for you because it was really, really windy. And also, do you think that that kind of gives you a little bit of an advantage as well? Because whereas we saw people losing stuff left and right, bottles flying off their trailer, I'm sorry, bottles flying off their tables and stuff like that. Like you seemed over there, calm, cool, collective. Like this is just what you do. Yeah. We've clicked in some pretty nasty stuff. (laughs) uh, Unfortunately, underneath the old pop-up tents. Yeah. uh, I would say for sure that was a huge advantage. Mm-hmm. And I, I told Kevin that I'm like, yeah, this is a, for someone. It's just another Saturday. I told him, I told him this would be the same thing if Alonzo said you have to cook in a trailer. Yeah. It would be opposite for me and him. Like yeah. I, I would be out of my element. I would not be, you know, my seasonings would not be where they're supposed to be. My tinfoil wouldn't be where it's supposed to be. Things are just aren't where they're supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Like that was my first comp cooking out of a trailer. Right? Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, for anyone who cooks out of a trailer every single weekend and then has to come out there and cook underneath the tent, yeah, uh, I'm sure that was pretty rough. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was very windy. Yeah, it was very windy. Yeah, so the wind, uh, the wind doesn't really affect the pit all that much. Well, not yours. Yeah, not mine. Yeah, uh, shout out Outlaw. Yeah, they. Uh, <laughs> it's a really good pit. Um, I would. My biggest worry is the tents flying off. Oh, yeah. We've been to multiple competitions where the pits are flying uh, like kites through the air, and uh, that that's the biggest worry. Um, so we, we uh, got pretty good at tying tents down, holding oh, them down. Yeah. There in the afternoon, it was starting to get really bad with the wind. It was bad yeah. enough. My dad was over there yeah. holding the tent down just in case, you know. Yeah. But as far as cooking goes, yeah, the wind, the wind doesn't bother me anymore. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a good way to... To look at it, I mean, it's something that you do, not every Saturday, but a lot of Saturdays. So you're you're really in your element. Yep. Um, you do have your family there with you, which is something that we wanted to kind of talk about too. Yeah, because from what we've seen at our invitationals, and also, you know, we've competed alongside you, like at Batland Barbecue, places like that. Your family is always with you. I don't know if that is it typically like that. No yeah. matter where you go. Yeah, normally it is. I've uh. I think I've only cooked one cook off in Leander. That was completely by myself. Right. Um, I've done maybe one or two more where it was just me and Bree. Mm-hmm. We left the kids at home just I don't remember why, but it was just like a weekend. We're gonna get away for the weekend and go yeah. cook a barbecue cup. Right. And I mean we're the same way. I mean family 
we all go together. His dad goes with us. Uh, what does it mean for you to have your family out there? Because, I mean, they're out there and they're involved. I mean, I remember uh, you guys were boxing ribs and it was all hands on deck. Like everybody was some holding the trays because, you know, it's windy, right? And then I think it's your dad's, you know, he's got the tweezers. He's holding one side of the ribs, hoping that they don't fall, you know. So everybody's out there and you guys are doing it together. So what does that mean for you? Yeah, it means the most. You know, family is the most. Y'all and y'all's company is built around y'all's family. Yeah. Um, yeah, so most of the time it's my wife, my kids, my mom most of the time. Um, she goes just to help wrangle the kids and help with the boxings if Bree's which, wrangling the kids. And yeah. Which helping with the kids is so huge. Oh my gosh, huge. huge. Yeah, it's huge. I don't mind them. Um while we're cooking, it's the boxing time that it's dude. like, okay, if someone can entertain them. <laughs> it's for when 10 I'm minutes. slicing, dude. My <laughs> yeah. my son, my son will be on her leg while we're slicing brisket, like right under us. I'm like, dude, you have to get away. You're right. this is very, very dangerous. Right. Yeah. Like, please get away. I don't want you to lose a finger or something, right. man. Hot hot uh hot meat and sharp knives and yeah, yeah. kids crawling all over the place. And not a always, good mixture. Someone no. always has to use the restroom right in the middle of like crunch always. time. Yes. yes. Yep. I got three girls, two of them are potty trained and it's non stop. Yeah. yeah. Potty, potty, potty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, having them there means a lot. Having my mom there. Um my dad shows up to the local ones. Uh he went with us to the showdown, IBA IBCA showdown in uh Round Rock. That was a I guess it was Hutto, actually. Mm -hmm. Hutto yeah, it was Hutto. Um, that was a good time. We rented a camper, and so the whole family stayed in a camper, and yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, yeah. They, they mean the most. Yeah, I mean, for for us personally, it's this would not be worth doing if it wasn't for our family being there. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, w this, to me, is a way for us to be a family even more. Right. Yeah, there's stress involved. There's money involved there's all sorts of stuff involved but if we i promise you right now if this was tearing our family apart i would quit today and for i sure. would i would have zero remorse right you know so it it's really fun for us like we have our little trailer our tiny trailer man we all sleep in the same trailer together on blow up mattresses and believe it or not it is just the funnest it's not the most comfortable right but it is the funnest i mean we're watching bluey on our little TV in there. And, you know, my daughter, one of my daughters will sleep on the air mattress with me. And, you know, we wake up and then we get to cook a barbecue. Life couldn't be any better. So we love that your family's involved as well. A lot of the people that we hang out with, man, they got their wives. They got their kids out there like Reenie. Yep. He goes with his wife. He takes his daughter and they have a good time out there. Raul goes with his wife, takes his daughter. And Kevin goes with his wife. Uh, Bobby goes to his wife. A lot of times his son goes, you know, Bill goes alone, but uh, like Phil goes with his wife, takes his yeah. son. So it, this is really family oriented. I feel like for a lot of us. So yeah, a lot of the competitions are, yeah, um, man, it's almost like camping. Yeah. It's almost like camping. Right. And you get to get away for a weekend, get to cook some good barbecue. And then for us, we stay in our trailer and 99.9% .9 of the time, it's either too cold or too hot in there. <laughs> because we we can't find that sweet spot like the the mini split works great almost too great because we're like in there at night we're like oh, I can't like I'm so cold and then we're like okay well raise it to 68 and they're like eh, now it's a little too warm all right put it down to 65 oh now it's way too cold I'm like man what is the sweet spot here but uh, no again it's amazing that your family's involved we're all for that and that's exactly why we're we're partners we go everywhere. Or try and go a lot of places together, and we're going to mesh for a really long time, man. So, moving on, the last thing we have when it comes to the GCS Invitational is what are your expectations going into the next one? Is there a category that we haven't included that you would be excited to compete in? I don't know. I kind of like your curveballs. Yeah, I think I think we'll keep doing those. Yeah, I think... Um you give everyone a fair opportunity to practice if yeah. they wanted to. You're not. Mm -hmm. You're not. We're not showing up the day of saying, uh, "Here's your secret basket ingredient." I, 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 dude, ask. Hey. I was this close to doing that. She <laughs> she talked me out of it. Thank you. I was. I well, I wanted to do it. She basically was like, "No, I don't think so." Well, I was going to do it because you know when you watch people do this on TV, 
and you know, there's a mystery basket, right? And then yep. somehow they've got all the ingredients they need to make a, you know, teriyaki salmon. Right. Like how the heck did you know you were going to need that teriyaki salmon? <laughs> yeah, so sauce, they probably you know? realistically yeah, knew. Right. So but you, it wasn't going to be anything crazy. You know what I was going to do? I was going to give everybody two jalapenos and say you have to incorporate this into your ribs. Mm. That's what I was going to do. Mm. I was going to do jalapenos and say this has to be incorporated into your ribs. Most people were probably just going to saute them and throw them in the rib sauce. Right. You know what I mean? And, and I, I get it. I was expecting maybe a couple of people to actually get some thin slices and put it on top. I don't know. But that was going to be what I was going to do. It wasn't going to be anything crazy. Well, I did have one crazy idea. My <laughs> my crazy idea, which she was just like, <laughs> no, was I was going to get Christmas tree cakes. Those Christmas tree cakes? Yes, the ones you love. The ones I love. The ones I love. You know. And I was going to say that that had to be incorporated into the chef's choice. Oh, no, you didn't tell me that. Yes, I did. You did I not. did. Yes, I did. No, 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 I you did not. I didn't tell you about the Christmas tree cakes? You did not. Oh, wow. A Christmas but, tree cake in replacement of the cream cheese? Something. That probably would have slapped. Hey, all you had to do was stick a Christmas tree cake in. That's first place right there. Yeah, Everybody if you would have just thrown Christmas tree, tree, all the Christmas <laughs> yeah. tree cakes in the box... Automatic winner. Yeah, if Alonzo was judging, that's all I would have I would have judged. Right. I would have judged. I would have been like, hey, celebrity <laughs> celebrity guest, or what is it called when you like take a shot in beer pong? Celebrity shot? I'd be like, shot. celebrity shot, I'm in. So, <laughs> no, I, I had some ideas up my sleeve, but I basically got told by my boss I couldn't do it. Yeah, the, the curveballs are fun. I yeah. mean, it uh, kind of pushes you out of your elements, and it kind of makes the playing field even. And this right. is what I was saying earlier. Yes, this is a barbecue competition, but it is not a typical barbecue competition. No. You cannot you cannot take the person that wins all the time every weekend and just bring them over here and have them win because it's different. Yep. And that's exactly what I want. The way Sabrina and I look at it is, yes, our goal is to do a sanctioned event. That's 100%. But if you wanted to do a sanctioned event, you would go to a sanctioned event. Right. When you come to ours, it is a little bit different. I got feedback from most people, and I I didn't get, well, from everybody, and I didn't get one complaint. No one said, oh, this sucked, or this was horrible, or I hated this. I mean, everybody had good things to say, so I think that we're, I don't want to say doing perfect. There can be things that are better, for sure. Right. I mean, I think that the biggest thing, and we talked about this the other day in front of the house, is that we do want to find a way to have people be able to come out and spectate uh, maybe get you guys one extra rack of ribs so you can have them for people to walk up and eat and stuff like that. But the curveballs are going to stay there yeah. because that's what makes it fun. Sure. And that's what makes it hard. And it makes a good YouTube video. For sure. Right. And, and and that's nobody wants to watch the same competition every, every single, single time. time. And, you know, and that's the thing that, you know, we've talked about before. I think sometimes people forget that we literally started this series for YouTube. Right. Right. That's why we started this. Of course, we want to. We want something fun for you guys to do. Absolutely, we do. But we started this for YouTube so we can make a cool YouTube video. Speaking of which, we haven't mentioned it yet. If you guys are listening to this right now, you can actually go and watch the YouTube video on YouTube. It actually dropped while you've while you've been sitting here. All right. Yeah, so when you get home, you can, you can watch it or do whatever you want. But go to that video. Check it out. Sabrina did a great job on editing it. It's a very long video. It's almost like a movie, not quite a movie, but a lot of great content. Uh, took her a very long time to edit, so please go show some love on that video. And like I said, the next ones, we're going to keep rolling, man, the same exact way. So probably a different location just so we can have a little more spread out. Right. But, I mean, I don't want to go more than 10 teams. Yeah, I mean, I, it's hard for people to complain about a competition that, Cost them fifty bucks with the toys for yeah Christmas charity yeah and and, then, and, and the first that, two were free first yeah. two were completely free yeah and then your meats are free yeah inside your chef choice you had to go buy a three dollar bag of beans yeah and then you had a chance at fifteen hundred bucks fifteen hundred dollars plus some toys yeah so yeah 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 no I mean we definitely we tried our best to level this one up yeah. because at the end of the day while yes this is for our YouTube channel. We need to make it worth it for you to come out. Right. Right. I mean, it's it's cool to be on the YouTube channel a couple of times, but at the same time, man, if I'm going to keep coming out to these, I mean, we kind of want something. Yeah. Uh, uh, plaques are cool, right? They're cool, but 
His belt buckle is real nice. Yeah, that belt buckle is really nice. I almost <laughs> was like, oh, I don't even know if I want to throw a competition. I might just throw, keep this one on uh, up here. Yeah, that's real but, nice. Uh, but no, I mean, we want to make it worthwhile for people to come. I mean, don't get me wrong. If we could double the price pool next time, that's what I want to do. Oh, yeah. That'd and be then great. F- and then for eight people fighting for money like that? Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, and, and for a free entry? Come on. Yep. You you can't lose. No. You cannot lose. It's uh you have all the opportunities in the world. And the cool thing about this one is the money was spread out pretty good too. Yeah. You and got the majority of it, but Caesar got some, Brandon got some, and then Mario got the griddle. So four different people yeah. got something, and then Kevin ended up getting a thermopin. Carl ended up getting a thermopin. I mean, we had a couple of teams that unfortunately didn't get anything, but man, I mean, they got to cook barbecue and hang out. So yeah, hopefully and, and that was good enough. And it's different because everyone's, I mean, you're not crammed in there, right? I'm not saying it's crowded, but you it's a little bit more laid back than a competition. It's a little, you're up more up close and personal people. Mm-hmm. So you can go around and BS with everyone and, you know. Oh, I can literally, I was literally walking from your tent to Brandon's, to Mario's, to Kevin's, to right. Caesar's, to Joe's, to, within Three seconds. Yeah, Mario was literally talking distance from me. We yeah. talked, and I had to borrow an injection needle from him because mine were jammed up. But, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, that, that's why it's nice cooking along. Shout out, Mario. Yeah, shout out. Yeah. yeah. That's why it's nice cooking along people that you know yeah. during competitions. Um, yeah, th- this comp is a great comp. Yeah, and we'll continue going, hopefully getting bigger and bigger and bigger, um, you know, getting different companies involved. I'm not going to say that I can just hit up Weber every single time and, you know, have them do what they did. But shout out again, Weber Grills hooking us up, making it a great event. B&B Charcoal hooking us up, making it a great event. Thermal Works, great event. I mean, just everybody involved, we are extremely grateful for all of you guys. So that's enough about the GCS Invitational. We wanted to move on to your IBCA points chase. And with IBCA... You actually started the season back in June, right? Or July? July. July. So you've been at it for almost six months already. Yep. And you've been having some pretty good success. We, of course, we watch. uh, We talk a lot. Your brisket's hitting. Your ribs are hitting. You're going to get that chicken down, and then you're going to be up there in the top 10, no doubt. But what are your goals for the rest of this year? So you have six months left, basically. What are your goals for the 2024 competition season? Yeah, so at the beginning of the season, July, um, we kind of uh, discussed our team goals for the year. It was going to be to get 12 top 10s. Mm-hmm. IBCA takes your best 12. Sure. So in order for us to even have a chance, we need to have at least 12. Sure. Um, I think we're at seven. Mm-hmm. We're seven out of 12 right now. Um, we were on a pretty hot streak at first at hitting those, so that was nice. Then we started... Started fading off. The chicken was whooping us. Yeah. We got 11th place a few times, which is very frustrating to go spend that much money and then not get points. Yeah. I'm at least in it for, if I'm not going to win money, I at least want points. Sure. Um, so yeah, the rest of the rest of the season, we traveled all over the place towards the end of 2023. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think, um, these next six months, we're going to try to stay more local. There's a lot, a lot of cookoffs that are within an hour of the house. Sure. Um, so that's the goal. We're going to try to do two a month. I know we're going to kind of get behind at the beginning due to work, but we'll catch up in March. So we'll probably hit it pretty heavy in March. Get caught back up to to get back up to the six, and then uh, I yeah. told I told Brady this the other day. I was like, well. You know, uh, depending on where we're at, we might be hitting it pretty hard there towards the end. Right? Yeah, I you mean, know, if right you're, now we're ranked eighth. Yeah, overall. So, so if you let's just say if you stay anywhere between eight and twelve towards the end of the year, man, you kind of have to go hard. I know you have to go hard and see if you can break into that top ten. Yeah, we're always trying to change our goals. I'm a I'm a chaser. So if I am gonna finish in the top ten on number eight, I would like to say the the next goal towards the end will be, well, I want to be number five. You know? For sure. Right. There's always something. There's always something to chase. So, yeah. Um, that's what gets me going and uh, keeps me wanting, it, wanting yeah. to keep it going. Well, man, obviously, best of luck moving forward. We know you're going to continue to do great things. And, I mean, I have no doubt you're going to get top ten. You know, I mean, it's in my head that's like a, I don't want to say a lock, but you're a good enough cook to get top ten. I don't even think you should worry about that. I think just go out there, man, 
just continue to have fun and whatever happens, happens. Yep. So, man, well, thank you so much for being on the show today. We really appreciate you coming out. The last thing I wanted to do was give you an opportunity. Shout out to anybody that you wanted to shout out. Oh, I'm lying. What is the most important tool that oh, you yeah. take to every cook-off? I've listened to all the podcast, and I'm going to say the obvious in my barbecue pit. Yeah. I mean, that's a good one. I mean, you, you kind of have to go with your pit, right? got to go with the pit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> without your pit, you ain't cooking. You yeah. ain't cooking. So, so that's I a, mean, the pit, and then I would say the thermopin. I mean, the, yeah, ther- the, the thermopin is, I think, a lot of everyone's yeah, number one that's tool. The, I, I mean, think right. that's the obvious answer because Solid. the thermopin, like, you need it for everything, dude. Everything. You need yeah. it for absolutely everything. So yeah. shout out Thermoworks. Yeah. Uh, thermopin and the barbecue pit are two damn good answers. Yeah. So now we'll move out. And we'll say, hey, do you have any shout outs that you want to give to anybody or any companies that you're working with or anything? Yeah, so a uh, shout out to Barari Craft Meats. They're uh, local here in Corpus. They help us out with some meats. Um, First Aid Bank of Odom. Nice. They just sponsored us for our events um, for the remainder of the season. So awesome. Shout man. out to them. They're local here. Sinton, Robstown, Odom, Corpus. Um, and we'll put a link in the description for these people for you as well. Okay. So Bawari, um, we have a great relationship with them as well. They carry our seasonings. They sell a lot of our seasonings. Yep. So we'll put links in the description for them and First Bank of Odom as well. Yep. And last but not least, Gulf Coast Smoke. Appreciate you, brother. Man, like I said, we're very, very grateful and thankful that you're on the team. Uh, so any, anybody that didn't know, Zach is actually one of our family members. We we have ambassadors or whatever you want to call it. We call it family members because, like you said earlier, family is everything to us. So everybody that we have on our team, we truly love. We truly, truly, truly believe in. Zach, you're one of those people, man. Thank you again for coming on. Did you have anything else for Zach before we get off today, Sabrina? No, I mean, thanks for joining us. We're happy to finally have a guest in-house. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, feels, pre- it feels good. This is great. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I ain't going to lie. I uh, wasn't really sure how I was going to like it. Not, not that I didn't think I was going to like it, but it is different looking at you rather than looking at Sabrina. Right. But at the same time, you know, having her right here, it just, it's probably it, prettier. yeah. She's, <laughs> yeah. She, we'll find a way to, fun. uh, I mean, it's just hard with the lighting, but we'll, we'll find a way to get a third camera angle. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, I think we need to do something different with this room. Like we need to get our computer out of here or something. Or I don't know. We get the itch too much to start rearranging. Yeah. We're like, dude, are you, I don't know what it is with us. Dude, you can ask her before we had kids. I would want to rearrange like the whole house every two weeks. Like yeah. I'm talking like moving TVs, couches, everything. Like I would get in a weird dude. I was moving the computer from this wall to that wall, to that wall, to this wall. Like, Every two weeks. No. I couldn't... I don't know what it is, dude. I'm like, once it's in place, that's... that's we'll live, see. Live in there forever. Well, we're, we're like that now because these kids make it hard to do anything. But, man, you know... Uh, oh, no. We still... I mean, I've just moved stuff around in here, like, just the other day. Yeah. It, yeah. We're not as bad as we used to, but, hey, it is what it is. And, uh... I guess social media? That's okay? Oh, yeah. Of course. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. yeah put your so, social media uh, on there. Facebook, Instagram, if you want to follow along. And again, we'll we'll link all this in the description below. Okay, it's just Meat Locker Misfits Barbecue. You can follow us along on the journey. So Nice. Yeah, so um, again, do not forget all the links will be in the description for all of Zach's social media, all of his sponsors. And uh, yeah, I think that's really it, right? Cool. Sweet. So Facebook, Instagram, that's it? TikTok. You TikTok. have a TikTok? Yeah, we have a TikTok. Okay. Yeah, we so, t- tinker around with the pizza. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, my wife. Uh, Send me all of your links, and we'll put it in the description. And this is going to be out on Friday. So today's Tuesday, so a couple more days. Yep. And like I said, if you guys haven't already, you can watch Zach win the third GCS Invitational right now on YouTube. It's the last video that we posted. Let me know in the comments, do you think he's going to win the fourth one? Four in a row, dude. <laughs> I ain't crazy. gonna lie. As time goes on, the odds are obviously stacking against you, right? Yeah. Because like how I mean, I guess I don't even know how to say it. It's just but as time goes on, it's like, okay, well, eventually he's gonna lose, right? When that day does come, are you gonna be pissed? You think or you think be like, yeah, I had my day. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, that's what I'd be like. Yeah. You, you think you'll be like, Yeah, well, I had I had my day. Yeah. Hopefully it's not like we got a hundred thousand dollar donation to first. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm not like dead last. <laughs> I mean, I still want it to, I still want to be in the top. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, 
if I have a feeling if you ever do lose, it's going to be like RGC. Right. You, you know what I mean? Right. Like you're not going to go to dead last right. or anything like that because not. we, uh, you know, Travis and Chance and I were talking about it. We're like, dude, he's just the goat of this competition. Like this is your comp. So I'm like, shit, I'm, I'm, I'm scared to cook in it. I don't even want to cook in it, dude. I'm going to lose to Zach on the channel. But that's the thing is, I mean, there's only what eight teams most uh, at most that we've had. Right. So yeah. When you're dead last, it seems like oh crap! Like God, but it's that's really not horrible. like that. Yeah, no. it's not because, because the the person that was dead last and the person that was first, it was a very small margin between them, and everybody cooks so good. Yeah. So, anyway, Zach Meat Locker Misfits, the three time back to back to back, maybe to back maybe. champion of the GCS Invitational. Thank you again. Links in the description. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace. Thanks again to Zach with Meat Locker Misfits for coming on the channel and being on the podcast. It was a great, great show. We really appreciate it. We've been cooking with Zach for a while. We've been hanging out with him for a while, and it was great to have him in person here. Our very first in-person guest, who should be the next? I don't know, but I'm, that, that already made me excited to get some other people here at this yeah. little <clears throat> table. Yeah, no, for sure. So my idea is Travis next. And the reason yeah. I want Travis next is because there's been a lot of people that have asked for my dad to come on and they want his point of view of kind of how we started, how things are going now and where they see us going. The unfortunate part of that is my dad will not be on this. Uh, that's, you know, it's just, it is what it is. I'm not going to make my dad feel uncomfortable and I completely understand why he doesn't want to do it, but not that Travis and my dad are equals at all, but Travis has been here from the beginning. He's seen where we started. He's seen where we've come, and I think he has an idea of where we want to go. So I think it'd be really cool to pick his brain and just see what he thinks about it. I think Chance would be another great person, but Chance doesn't live here. So Travis can come over pretty easily. I think that he would be great to have in-house. We could talk about GCS, how it started, where it's going, all that cool stuff. So that's my idea for the next guest, but we'll see how that pans out. Yeah, and I mean, don't forget, this is all things everything, and in the year of 2024, we really want to talk uh, about dive deeper into the all, all things, things. Every, yep. Right. And this is something that we've talked about before, but at the end of the day, this podcast is just a way for us to talk with each other and relate with you guys. So if there's any non-barbecue-related topic that you want us to talk about please put it in the comments and we'll talk about it like i said it's all things everything well we're not experts in any of this this is just really a way for like i said us to have some entertainment do stuff together and enjoy each other's company which we we do it's so nice to be able to within reason close the door not be bugged <laughs> and have a conversation because we don't get to do this. Yeah. Oh, we still get bugged. Yeah. We still get bugged every time. <laughs> so, but it is what it is. Yeah. And, uh, that being said again, thank you guys for listening today. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, share it with a friend. If you guys enjoy our content and what we're doing, anything else? Oh, welcome to 2024. We're going to make this a good one. We're going to make this the best one ever. Yeah? Yeah. The best one ever. The best one ever. See you guys on the next one. Peace, Peace out.